What's going on guys? I'm Renegade and over the years I have been accused of collecting old cars which isn't exactly untrue. Draw, got my A6 Porsche 944 project, my 87 Volvo 245 that currently is having a project that is starting on it. I'll talk about that more in another video. And of course, what has become my daily driver for right now, while the project on that car gets done, my 91 245. Yeah, I like older cars. But in my mind, I don't think of them as being old. I think a lot of these as being timeless. I mean, all right. So the styling compared to modern cars is dated. But I still love the way that that car looks. I still think it's a very timeless design. It's sleek, it's elegant. All right, it's a little boxy, but I still like it. So, I still drive them. But I will admit that these cars are of an older generation. Technology has moved forward, um, accessories have moved forward, and I like my cars to at least be a little on the timeless side, even when it comes to something like accessories. So today we're going to do something that might be a little polarizing to some, but I think it's gonna be really cool. Let me explain. So a while ago now, I picked up these off of Amazon, I believe. I can't remember now if I got them off of Amazon or off of Wish. Either way, I'll leave a link for them down in the description. Um, these are what they call shadow lights or door lights or step lights, whatever you wanna call them. And what they are is actually, let me see if I can get a package open here. What they are, are these little projectors. Pretty small, you notice. Doesn't take up a whole lot of room. And these will actually go on the outside lip of my door. Hidden and closed off when my door is closed. And they're hooked up to wires so that when the door gets opened they'll shine and what's cool about these is that they make them for all sorts of different models of cars I have some here that project the Volvo iron mark down on the ground now I've also seen them where you can get uh, custom designs and things like that and I, just, I didn't want to go that route at least not for this car maybe if I like these enough I might go with it for my black car down the road we'll see I think these will be a nice little touch to my car, a nice little accessory, kind of give it a little more of that timeless luxury look. I think it's just gonna be really cool. I mean, how cool is it that I'll be able to open my door and the car's insignia will be displayed down on the ground projected from the door. I think it's kind of cool. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna install these suckers. Let's get out to the car and start taking things apart and get into it. First thing I'm gonna have to do, get the door apart. That's fun. So with the door all open, now it's a matter of just figuring out where to put this. Now I did also off camera free up my fuse box and everything so I can get to this access point back behind it because I'm gonna run the wires 
through this, which is where all the wires go anyway for all your things like your power windows and your door locks and the whole nine yards. So I'm gonna be running it in through here. The other thing to take note of is this right here. This guy is your door lock, or your, not your door lock, your um, door open and close ground interrupt switch. If you guys remember many, many years ago, I used one of these on my XJ600 for a glove box light. It's a basic principle when the button is pushed closed, the ground is interrupted. So the circuit is interrupted and the light is turned off. When it's out, the ground is complete, the circuit is complete, so normally it would turn on your dome light. We're gonna use that as our ground point for our new lights that we're putting on. This way, the only time that the lights are on is when the door is open. So, now with the door all open, it's a matter of just figuring out where to put, where to put the light. As I said, it's gonna sit in here. So, I just gotta figure out where along this path I want the, can you even see that? Yes. <clears throat> where along here I want my light and then drill a hole. Now they did give me a hole saw. It's supposed to be the right size. So this is gonna be interesting to see if this bit actually works. If not, I got another solution. It's not a big deal. So we're gonna put this in the drill and hit it. As I suspected, this bit is garbage. Kind of suspected that, but I figured I'd give it a try anyway. It did drill me a pilot hole, which is good. But if you guys look, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's all I really did was drill a pilot hole and then cut a groove. So what I'm gonna end up having to do is I'm gonna have to use a slightly bigger bit, drill a, drill a bigger hole, and then use a step down bit to actually go the rest of the way. So I kind of expected it, but not that big a deal. Now, with that in place, see, nice and tucked up underneath and everything around here. Also, not that I probably need to say it, but just on the safe side, make sure when you're drilling, you wanna make sure there's nothing behind it that's gonna interfere and that you're not gonna accidentally drill through when you go to actually drill your holes. Fairly common, but you know, still gotta be careful. Now this, I will tuck up with the other wires and run in all the way through and over to here and hook up to both my ground spot and a power supply. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up to the same exact fuse as the door switch or the dome light is already attached to. Why not use one power source, right? Right. All right, so I got the wires run through the door and up to the door jam switch. And I got this one kind of cut long and just kind of sitting there as a tester. And the reason for that is that I'm gonna have to connect the other doors to that wire. So everything's gonna run off of it. It's fairly simple. Like I said, I'm gonna put a connector on that and actually hook it up 
in a little while, but right now I just wanted to do this. Now what I'm gonna do here, and it might not be the recommended way to go, I'm sure someone will tell me, but it's okay. If I can set up the camera in a way that you guys can see, I've got the wires here that go to my door jam switch. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut this connector off and put a brand new one on with both these connectors in one. And then it'll go right on that, which I'm also gonna clean up with some sandpaper since I'm right here. Cut. Strip. Now, if this worked correctly, the dome light should be on, which it is, and that light will be on too. And if I push the switch, all right, now if I did this correctly, that little spotlight and that dome light will come on when I take this, or when I let go of the switch. That's on, that's on. Awesome. So now the only thing left to do while I got the door open is I'm gonna to have to make sure that the actual insignia is being projected down the direction that I want it to, tighten it all up, and then I can put this all back together and move on to the other doors. There you go, projecting the direction that I want. It's kind of hard to show on camera, honestly, because it's, it's light outside. I and mean, you can kind of see it. You'll see it better later on tonight when I show it to you. And I will show you this in the dark because this will be really cool. So let me go ahead and take care of these other things, put the door back together and start moving in to the next door. All right, so as you can tell, it's starting to get dark. I'm losing my light very quickly. So <clears throat> some of this, I didn't get a chance to film just because I was in such a rush. When it gets dark early, you, sometimes you just gotta kind of power through it so I didn't have time to like set up a lot of shots but basically all four doors they're all the same basic setup the only real pain of it all was that for the other three doors I had to run wire all the way up and around to the fuse box so if you were to basically x-ray my car or start taking apart the car you'll find that there's a power wire that runs from each of the doors the passenger side runs back door to front door. They tie in together and then continue up under the dashboard and over to the fuse box. The back driver door runs up and connects to that same uh, wiring harness. And what I did was because I worried about having to work on things down the road, I did put a connector on each one so that I can disconnect if need be and not just have to like cut wires and splice and everything. I always like the extra security of knowing I can take it apart if I need to. But, yeah. So right now I'm just basically putting the car back together and then I can really show you guys well. You can kind of get an idea now. Ta-da! But I'll show you guys in a better situation where you can see me and see the, the lights a little better.
Not too shabby, huh? I certainly don't think so. Of course, shooting in this light's a little difficult because, you know, it's gotta be dark for you to really see these well. Now I'm in dark. Also nice to have a parking garage that I can shoot this in, have a good lighting situation. It's okay, I know the maintenance guy. So this project wasn't exactly as easy as I thought it was gonna be just because of the running the wires, but it was pretty easy. And before anyone goes and messages me about, can I have the wiring diagram, wiring schematic, whatever, for what I did, it's very simple. Just run all the power wire to the, uh, the same fuse as your dome light is on. I call it the courtesy fuse, is where your dome light, your glove box light, your clock, all that fun jazz are in. It's on every one I've worked on, it's fuse number eight. And then, like I said, I just ran the grounds to each of the door jam switches. Of course, now my audio recorder decides that its battery is going to die, even though I thought it was fully charged. Oh well. But yeah, I think this is quite a nice little mod. And as you can tell, they're fairly bright. You know, I mean, I'm in darkness, fairly dark here. So they really show up well. Um, when you're in super bright, they don't show up as well. But it is what it is. I like it. I think it's a real nice mod. And if you're ever in, <clears throat> if you're in a situation where you're getting out of the car and it's dark, and maybe there's uneasy, uneven terrain, well now, I can clearly see it. Hopefully, <clears throat> You guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. And if you're looking forward to more videos like this, make sure you hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know if I went upload a new video. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think of this project. I was looking online and I have yet to see another Volvo 240 that has these lights. Kind of cool. Anyhow, that's going to do it for me for today. Uh, feels good to get back to car projects and I'll be getting to more real soon. So until next time, y'all keep rocking and rolling. I'm keep taking care of business. See you next one.